I've had quite a few people ask if it's safe to use a third party app on your watch or your phone to connect through the Tesla API to control your car. Obviously, on the face of it, like, you know, allowing a third party app access to your Tesla, you're definitely quite concerned about vulnerability or, you know, what happens if somebody hacks into the server that belongs to that app and then they can take control of your car. You know, on the face of it, it's quite alarming. But actually, the reality is enough actually for me to feel quite confident in, in the way it works. So I'll just explain how it works and, and you can kind of draw your own conclusions from that. So Tesla themselves provide an API that third parties can connect to. And when the third party app is fully authenticated using your credentials, it can control your car. So if you imagine all the big Tesla servers off in the cloud somewhere, those servers can talk to your car. And when you use the Tesla app, that's how that works. So you push a button in the Tesla app, communicates via the Tesla server to open your car using the car's built-in internet connection. Now the car itself can respond to some commands via Bluetooth without the internet as well. And the latest update for the Watch for Tesla app can now do this as well, which is fantastic. So the way this actually works is you log into Tesla and generate a third-party access token. And then that token is stored on the device itself and it's never actually sent to a third party server. So every time you tell your watch to do something, it sends that request to the Tesla server along with that access token. Without the access token, it can't control your car. It hasn't gone anywhere else. It's only gone straight to the Tesla servers. So there's no server out there that somebody could hack into and gain control through this mechanism. So the only place that token exists is in the device. So obviously at that point, you're talking about physical theft of your watch. So for me, I, I'm quite happy with the way that works. I like the security inherent in the way that that works. It's not storing that key somewhere else. Now, obviously, there is a big part of this that we are trusting the developer of the app to be true to the way they describe this. So there's a chance that if the developer of the app was, you know, a bad actor, they could obviously be transmitting the key to a third party server without you knowing about it and without them saying that they're doing it. So there's a chance that that's going on. But the developer on the website says that they are actually prepared to share the source code with people for security audits. I don't know if that's happened yet. I'd be very interested to have a look at the code myself to see. As a software developer, I'm, I'm definitely pretty confident I could spot if there's anywhere in the code where it could be sending that key to something else. So I'd be happy to do something, maybe a video look with the developer to, to share that because I think the technology is so cool that it would be great if people could trust this and that little bit extra peace of mind there would go a long way, I think. But if you are taking the app at face value, there's nothing inherent in the way that it works that presents any additional security risk the way I see it. So that's just my take on it and hopefully my sort of explanation of how it works in theory. Hopefully that little explanation of that is enough for you to make your own mind up. It's a great kind of technology and a great way to extend that power that we've got there. And the watch app for Tesla is an amazing thing, especially now it's got Bluetooth control. Watch this video next for a bit more information on that Bluetooth update that allows the offline access from your watch to your car. Really cool feature. I'll see you there.